Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're now continuing our beginner guide for Don't Starve Together, uh, continuing on episode 19. Um, once again, I do stream uh, every day on Twitch TV, so if you guys prefer to watch me on there and ask me any questions that you might have not had answered in the comments, feel free to ask me there. Uh, but we're going to quickly continue on our guide here. Uh, so if you guys uh, want to, once again, uh, if you do have any questions, I try to answer the comments as often as I can, but if you don't, uh, you know, if you have, don't necessarily have the answer right away and you want to have it as soon as you can, follow, follow me on uh, Twitch TV and you can then scroll down to my Discord link, uh, join into the Discord and feel free to ask any questions you'd like to there. Uh, so continuing on day 19, before we left off, we showed a few tips and tricks on how to fight spiders, uh, do a few different things, but we're going to start getting you ready for a full moon. Uh, day 19 is a perfect day to kind of get you uh, somewhat started and ready to go for that. So once again, before we go too, too far, we want to get ourselves nice and ready to go with some more grass and some more rocks. So looking on our map, you can tell that there's two different ways that we can go. We can either go over here for a bunch of, a bunch of grass and possibly a few little rocks, or we can go to the left here where there's a ton of rocks, but they're surrounded by giant eggs. And as we mentioned before, when we walked by there, there's giant creatures there ready to attack us. So we're going to go the safer route and we're going to go look for some grass because grass is more so what we need. And along the way, if we encounter a few little rock boulders, we might smash them up. So let's quickly go do that real fast. Get ourselves some rock, get ourselves some grass. Uh, and remember that your miner hat uh, does depreciate uh, over time. So Right now we're sitting at 19%, so we don't want to really use this unless we absolutely have to. Uh, and we always want to remind you that going next to, I think we've seen it in the corner of our eye, that a bouncing little a bouncing little trap was ready to go, uh, and there was a little bunny in there. So you can also leave them alone. For example, the bunnies will eventually stop jumping when they when they do spoil or they do die, which will automatically turn into a morsel. So if you wait for that to happen, though, obviously you can sit, like let it sit there. If you forget about it, it will eventually turn into rot. But I would suggest you know trying to get them um, before they completely die and then begin to spoil on the ground. So no, we now know that there's a little bit of a morsel there ready to go for us when we need so. Uh, and we're going to go, like I said, look for some grass and look for some more rocks. We're going to also be passing by something that we're going to come back to very soon, and that is a pig house. Uh, and we're going to be using those pig houses on a full moon day, and I'm going to explain why tomorrow. Now, you will notice that we left some of these berry bushes still close by, and that is because we, if you pick up a berry bush, and then obviously, as I mentioned before, you have to fertilize it, leaving some wild berry bushes out in the wild is sometimes better than having to bring them back to your base and then worry about fertilizing. So even in wintertime, those berries will always remain uh, perfect. They won't spoil as long as they're actually on the berry bush themselves. So come wintertime, if we run low on food or filler, we can always run back there and grab a little bit of food. Uh, for example, if we run out of meat. Um, obviously, ice, if you eat it during wintertime, won't give you much hunger. So we're going to want to make sure that we have some sort of alternative um, emergency foods just in case. We don't necessarily need a lot um, of grass, but get yourself enough to have yourself a handful or two. I would say maybe around 16 to 20 grass is ideal. I usually always try to carry the max amount as I can on me, but that is completely up to you at the same time. One thing I always uh, want to mention is that always keep your log suit and uh, hat on you if you can, because as you can hear, you can hear the hounds that are about to try to attack us. And the hounds are going to show up at random times. They're not necessarily going to be on specific days or anything like that. So they're not necessarily timed like the deer clops. You can try to time the, you know, between day six and, and 10. But once again, they do show up more often uh, when you at least expect it. So always make sure that you have either a friend near you uh, or you are almost ready uh, to fight at any moment. So you always want to make sure you have armor on you. Abigail is probably one of the best companions to have during a hound attack because you you can just let Abigail do most of the work and protect you. Now, when the hounds do attack, always make sure that you pick up both the, the hound's teeth uh, and the monster meat that they drop. Sometimes they don't always drop a hound's tooth, so just try to get them when you can because they are a very important late game. Um, as the night continues, we're going to uh, continue on trying to get ourselves some, some rocks as much as we can, but our main... 
our main source is trying to get as much grass as well too. We don't necessarily need a lot of rocks right now. It's just more so that you never want to leave yourself with minimum resources when you could potentially have the time to get a lot, especially before winter. Because as soon as winter hits, uh, leaving the base is only unless you absolutely have to and in order to get resources and eventually try to do things close around your base rather than exploring through the maps uh, as, as long as you have the resources. But we'll talk about that when the time comes. Getting closer to winter though, you can tell that now our temperature is really drastically dropping and beginning to drop even further as we walk away. Mind you, we do have, mind you, we do have our thermal stone that we should have warmed up before we left. Um, but you know, I'll explain that once we get back as well too, because come winter time, we're not gonna wanna leave our base without remembering to, to uh, warm up our thermal stone. But the beauty, once again, about playing Wilson is that he has uh, an added bonus for once again having his bit uh, his beard on him fully grown. So leaving that throughout all of winter is going to be a handy tool in case you do forget to have your thermal stone. These things that you're going to be mining are going to lead you to the caves. And once again, we're going to leave that alone because I don't want to open them up as of right now unless we absolutely have to. Now that we have a little bit of rocks and we have a little bit of grass, I'm going to continue on our journey um, and go over, well, since we're really close, and we're going to grab what is called a cut reed. And we're going to also try to get ourselves some gold if we can, but unfortunately, right now, we're a little bit too far away from gold. And always remember that wormholes are an easy access to different areas. For example, the wormhole that is up there is currently undetected. We don't actually know where that leads to. But for example, if, the worm, if that wormhole led to, for example, this wormhole, we can go through there and automatically be teleported up there. So that is always something to look at is where your wormholes are located as well, too. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves a few reeds. Before stepping into this biome, you're going to want to make sure that while you're while you're grabbing reeds, if you notice something starting to bubble beneath your feet, you're going to want to make sure that you be very, very careful. The swamps are one of the most unforgiving uh, areas of Don't Starve Together because there's so many things here trying to attack you. And be very careful when approaching what looks to be like pig houses on the map, which are known as merm houses. Merms, just like pigs, will automatically attack you, and they will continue to do so until they kill you, but merms generally uh, will always remain near their house just like pigs. So try not to just go too close to their houses unless you absolutely have to. There you can see the bubbling in what is known to be, if you hover over it, a wet tentacle. If you go too close to them, a giant tentacle will come out and att attempt to attack you, and uh, will do a great job of it if you get too close. So just try to avoid them right now, but going further we might explain more on how to attack them and how to take Take care of them so avoiding the merms avoiding uh, the tentacles grab yourself maybe 12 or so cut reeds and let's head back home and because we are starting to get hung uh, hungry and we got to get ready for day 21. now getting ready for what is known as a new moon uh is is different than getting ready for something known as a full moon but i want to kind of get you used to knowing for like the the even in the odd uh days that will kind of come a little bit later, but at least we want to get you kind of ready for that right now anyways. So on day 11, uh, as we've seen before in the previous episodes, that is known as a full moon. But on day 21, that is known as a new moon. And a new moon will not cause the night to actually shift into... Uh, where you can see out at nighttime, it will not make wear pigs. Uh, it will not make anything of those sorts. But it will also do, it will do something different that kind of comes very, very, very far into the future uh, and don't starve together. Uh, if you approach any berry bushes um, that look that look like this, these are known as juicy berry bushes. Try not to eat them if you if you can help it right away, um, because when you cook these things, they will give you a lot more hunger than when they're uncooked, uh, and that is something that uh, really come in handy if you do find them. Um, on your way so once again we're going to get things ready for we're going to get re things ready for day 21 uh and to kind of just get you into that mindset now nothing important will happen with with the pigs or or um with the pigs are that are on day 21 um but you'll actually like kind of remember the fact that on on day 21 it's a new moon and on day 31 which is another 10 days after that uh you got to be ready because all the pigs that are around you will turn into a were pig which comes in very 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 handy um so like come winter time when day when day 31 hits uh you're going to be you're going to want to make sure that you are ready you have some armor because it's going to be very useful uh, utility to have so we're going to travel back. We're going to cook up our berry bushes, our berry that we have here, and we're going to begin to eat them. Uh, and if we do have any extra meatballs, we can also eat those as well too. But I want to show you how good uh, these juicy berries can be when cooked. So normal berry is only going to give you 
uh, a little bit of hunger when you eat them, but a cooked juicy berry won't last long at all. They'll last, they'll spoil in one day and they'll spoil very, very, very quickly. However, cooked though, will give you 18.8 hunger. Uh, and that's why I always promote. So three cooked juicy berries will literally fill your belly half full, equivalent to almost uh, an entire meatball. So just something to kind of keep in mind. Now, instead of eating the seeds today, we're going to keep these seeds with us. We're going to keep the cut reeds with us as well, too. Place the seeds currently in the fridge. Grab your cut reeds. Look to see if you have any gold in your inventory. If you don't, uh, we're going to go ahead and try to get ourselves some. But before then, we're once again going to get ourselves uh, attuned to uh, day 21 or day 31. Just remember, if there's any days that end with the one after, that's what you want to start remembering because those are going to be important nights going forward and don't starve together. So when you have a enough resources, you're going to want to make yourself a hammer. Now, a hammer doesn't necessarily need to be made off of an alchemy engine or science machine. You can make it on the go, just like you would a pickaxe or an axe, and you want to keep that in your backpack if you can. Uh, and we are very low, once again, on rocks. We're very low on logs, and we're starting to begin to feel the effects of winter. So good thing is we left our thermal stone next to the fire, so we can grab a fresh thermal stone that's nice and warm, plop down our cold thermal stone, and begin to go out uh, into the wilderness at nighttime, and our thermal stone uh, will keep us nice and warm. Um, our miner hat is still at 12%, so we're going to want to try to get ourselves something like that. So there's a few resources that we want to go and get ourselves. We want to smash down some pig houses, which we talked about which we're going to do and what i usually suggest doing to remind yourself of what you need to get done that day take your backpack and put the items of what you're trying to remember to do in the top left corner of your backpack so for example we want to remember we want to remember that we want to go and smash up some pig houses so we're going to put that there we want to remember that we want to get ourselves some gold so we're going to put the cut reeds there we want to remember that we need to get ourselves some logs so we're going to put that there and remember that we need to get ourselves some rocks that'll remind you periodically of what you need to get that day without continuously reminding yourself every few minutes so we have our miner hat which is starting to get very low on us so we're going to want to try to make sure that we refill that when we can so going back into our chest, we're going to pull a firefly and we're going to right click on our miner hat, refilling that to 43%. We can also go into the caves and get something known as light bulbs, but we want to try to avoid anything that's super difficult right now. Once again, leave the firefly that's currently in there because you're going to possibly need that in emergency cases. We're kind of full. We're ready to go. Let's go ahead and begin to go and smash up some pig houses. The beauty ab about doing uh, smashing a pig house is that even though you're attacking the pig houses, they're not necessarily going to they're not necessarily going to attack you unless uh, they're provoked. So looking at the right, we still actually do have two pig houses, but we want to get a few more. And there's a specific reason for this. And that is because we want to give, get ourselves some, ac some access to pig skins and, and potentially some extras that we might need. Now, if you do this at nighttime and you smash a pig house, the pig will fall asleep. If it's during the day, the pig will remain awake. And if you don't pick up the resources fast enough, the pigs will continue to try to eat uh, what they can that is on the floor. And that is what the pig skins uh, that they'll attempt to eat. And you don't want to have you don't want to have that happen because obviously you want to make sure that you uh, keep as many of these resources as you can. And pig skins are very, very useful and don't starve together. And you want to get as many of them as you can. This doesn't mean go around your entire world and smash up your houses, but if you are living in in the world of don't starve together and you're beginning to learn um, how to survive smashing up the pig houses is such an easy way of getting early game resources whether it's cut stone or boards as long as you don't smash up too many of them and here we are in our first day of winter so you can tell that it's the first day of winter because the scenery has changed it's almost like kind of like a like a light blue color has kind of filled and you can see that soon uh, there's going to be dusk and it's going to be very very cold so we have our thermal stone that is now at six that is now at six degrees and you can also tell that uh we're beginning to slowly uh get colder and colder and colder luckily though if you remembered we pre-made a fire pit and always made sure that we had one handy just in case so continuing on let's go ahead and smash up just a few more of these pig homes just enough to get us a few more uh, pig skins if you can and try to remember to pick them up uh, the pigs will still continue to try to uh, attack you if you attack them. But as Wilson, you can walk near a pig. You can uh, go up to and try to talk to a pig if you want. But they're not going to try to attack you. 
So leaving these pigs alone, uh, we're going to go back and we're going to take some pig skins with us and we're going to continue to maybe make one or two extra more pig houses, which I believe we already have. No, we don't actually have any more pre-made right now. Uh, so as we continue on, you're going to now see an ice glacier. And as before, when you see in the ice that we had available uh, in our crock or in our that we used in the crock pot and we used inside of uh, the fridge, we only had small little tiny glaciers, but now we have much larger ones. If you are about to freeze, do not place your campfire next to uh, uh, next to one of these glaciers because it will continuously de deplete what is around it. Uh, so you want to make sure that if you do begin to get a little bit too chilly, place down your campfire, warm up next to it until you get nice and toasty. And sometimes it helps to put your thermal stone down so you can wait for the thermal stone to heat up faster while it's on the ground. Let your character get nice and toasty. Once it becomes almost a red glow, uh, you can wait a little bit longer than that so it continues to to you know get even warmer because you can tell the temperature with the show me mod. If you're not using the show me mod, you don't have to you don't have to worry about it. You can just kind of focus on the colors. But as soon as it turns into a deep orange color, uh, that is when you're gonna want to pick it back up. Boom. And you're going to continue to chop down the ice glaciers. So anytime you encounter an ice glacier, if you have your golden pickaxe on you or a pickaxe in general, try to get them. They're very, very helpful, uh, especially with making recipes, especially in wintertime. And they're so plentiful um, yeah, around winter that you just want to continue to use them as much as you can. And if you don't use them, they're eventually just going to melt into as soon as springtime hits anyways. So you might as well get them while you're there. So going back, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go back, make a few of our uh, make maybe one or two pig houses, and then we're gonna use what's ever left over for something even better. Um, and that is known as a handbat. And handbats are extra useful when attacking, and I'm gonna show you why. And they're extra useful in winter time because uh, they last even longer. So handbat is exactly what it sounds like. It's a bat made out of ham. However, it's a lot better than a spear and will continue to be for most or if not all of winter uh, and will last the entire time. So unlike a spear or anything else, uh, it'll actually deplete how it spoils. So for example, we're going to go back. We have one pig skin, which we actually, I think we had a few extra left in our chest anyways, but regardless of that, we're going to, we're going to combine them together and grab ourselves one pig skin. We're going to go in our ice box. We're going to grab ourselves spoiled meat to make sure they're large meat, which are actually about to spoil, which is perfect. And this is why we left our spoiled meat there. We didn't want to cook them up just yet. We're going to go to our alchemy engine. We're going to craft ourselves a rope. We're going to go to our fighting tab and we're going to highlight the hand bat and make sure that we have a few tweaks on our inventory. Highlight the hand bat, select the hand bat. And now we have a hand bat that is going to last us for 10 days. So from now until 10 days is when it's going to spoil, uh, which means that this hand bat is going to do 60 damage for up to 10 days. And then after that, it's going to go down. To, uh, it's basically just going to start depleting um, as it kind of begins to spoil. It starts to lose damage. So over the spear, which only does 34 and has a limited 150, you have a hand bat that does 60 damage uh, over the course until it begins to spoil. And so now we're going to take the hand bat and we're going to take our spear, which we're not going to obviously toss away, but we're going to toss it on the ground in case somebody else would like to use it. Once again, take our, our thermal stone that is now nice and toasty, put our old thermal stone on the ground and put our ice in the fridge. Now we have a beautiful hand bat. However, we're not now noticing that things are about to start to spoil a lot quicker uh, inside of our ice box. Not necessarily quicker, but we have things that we need to start cooking up or decide what to do with inside of our ice box. So what I like to do in the ice box is separate our spoiled stuff uh, from potentially our good stuff. And that way you can kind of tell uh, what needs to, what's in, you know very important for that time. So we take our, we're going to take our pig skins, we're going to take our, our boards, we're going to take our cut stone, we're going to go to our structures tab, and now we can make what is called a pig house. Pig houses are great. Uh, they basically relocate pigs close to you, which looks like we've already done. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to place more of these next to the ones that are already over there, uh, which Aki already made previously for us. Now, pig houses are great to have close to your base, as long as they're not too close to the base, because... Uh, come day 31, we're going to have a whole other problem on our hands. So now that we have four pig homes, we can go ahead, put that there. You want to make sure they have a little bit of space, and we're going to tell you why 
Um, for example, you don't want to have these, you know, too close to the wall or sp spread out too much. You want them kind of close to each other. And we're going to show you why coming soon. Uh, so when we get enough rocks, we'll kind of go back to our pig houses and show you how you can uh, have your own little pig farm and uh, handy dandy hand bat every single time that you need one. So take your extra cut stone, put it inside of your chest if you have room to do so. Uh, once again, our hungry rabbits are about to get extra hungry and, and soon pass away so you have the choice of either feeding them uh, a carrot or anything that you can uh, you can decide to feed them um, any berries if you want to keep them alive but in this case we're going to murder the berries and we're going to use them as uh, we're going to use them as meat and morsels so now that we have our spoiled berries we have our spoiled uh, meat we've made our hand bat which means that we no longer need this meat we can go to the campfire uh, we can use either our Action Queue Reborn mod that I explained in a previous video, which you can select, double click on here, or you can hold Shift with the Action Queue Reborn and begin to cook. And now, instead of spoiled berries, we now have uh, better berries that can now be used in recipes. Uh, and, and once again, as soon as the color goes to green, you can tell that uh, you know you're back in the you're back in the way of need, being able to cook without having to worry about the next recipe that you make. Uh, come almost ha half green or basically you want to make sure that it's it's not on the spoil meter uh, when you when you decide to cook something for example if i were to take these berries that i'm just now cooking that are almost about to completely rot uh, and i and i cooked with them they would give you half the value of the food that a normal meatball would do uh, and you definitely don't want to have that once again take your meat cook that up and now I'm going to show you another recipe that is extremely useful, and I would highly recommend getting used to using that in Don't Starve Together. So normally our monster meat, we've taken and we've combined them with three filler in order to make ourselves a meatball. But we're going to make ourselves a new recipe before we sign off on this video, and it's going to be a meaty stew. So you can tell that our hunger is 150, and we're getting very hungry. We take our meatball out of the crock pot that is now ready. It's going to, it's going to feed us for 62.5, but that's not enough. We want to have one meal that we can fill our bellies completely. So we're going to take two cooked meat. They have to be the big ones. They can't be the small ones. For example, we take a morsel uh, and we decide to use those instead. It will not make the same recipe. So we take our cooked meat, two in there, one monster meat, not two. And now you have a meat value of three, a meat value of three. We take one filler of any kind. And now we are making ourselves a meaty stew. And a meaty stew is one of the best meals you can make and don't starve together for completely filling your belly up. Uh, and that way you can have yourself uh, a tasty meal. It cooks very quickly, a lot quicker than a lot of the other, other custom meals, for example, like a pierogi and stuff. So you want to make sure that... Um, this is definitely something on your radar at all times. 150 hunger. The rest is kind of just there for bonus, plus sanity, plus health, which is always good. And one bite to eat, and you're now back to full stats. All right, so there you go. Day 22 already. Uh, if we're cooking up a storm, we're making a cool base, uh, and we're going to come back again uh, very shortly and show you how to make a birdcage. And getting through uh, close to day 30 already, so make sure that you guys are ready because when the Deer Club shows up, it's going to be an interesting battle. Once again, before we sign off, um, if you guys decide to make yourself a little bit of extra armor, always make sure that you have a 100% log suit. Uh, one or two, ro so we need two ropes, and then always make sure that you have a little bit of logs uh, left over after making so. Now we have ourselves two log suits because we're going to be needing them for the next episode. And that is it, guys. We will see you guys in the next one where we make ourselves, um, where we make ourselves. Uh, a bird cage and kind of go over a few other things before we have to encounter the deer clops. Thanks again for listening, guys. Once again, I stream every day on uh, Twitch TV and we try to do these YouTube videos as often as we can. So I hope you guys are enjoying them and continuing to learn along. And just as we go to sign off, it begins to snow. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye.